okay in this video we'll talk about how to install universal forwarder in in windows environment so basically we'll be using a google cloud windows instance okay and also we'll see using that universal forwarder how to monitor windows log events okay now as you may know in windows all the logs generated by different applications or services in windows are stored in binary format right so internally splunk uses some apis to get those logs in binary format and produce it or basically index it in a readable format human readable format okay so we'll see how to do that that setup but before that let us create an windows instance okay so our main aim is to over here the, in that newly instance newly windows instance we'll be installing our universal forwarder okay and then we'll forward the data to our splunk receiver instance if you remember we have created this instance before in our in our tutorial right so we'll be using this this instance as a receiver so let us create this instance first i'll be clicking on that create instance link okay so we'll give it a name called splunk wing forwarder okay so one let's say and i will select the region let's say us central one itself okay so two cpu will take now here the operating system will be taking as windows 2019 data center server with desktop experience if you see you have to choose that one okay so that we can we can log in through desktop and 50 gb uh, disk size is also fine yeah i'll be clicking on select so after that we will be for access type we will select the allow default access we will uh, check this box allow http traffic as we have done in our previous instances as well and we'll click on create so let us wait for some times to um, to set up this particular instance we'll come back after some time okay our instance has been created now so first thing is if you if you see the differences over here for linux instances we have ssh over here right now for windows instances we have this rdp now the first thing we'll do is we'll set the windows password over here okay so we'll click on that one so it will it will select that username so currently if you log in with your google id so it will be selecting that id and if i just click on set okay so it will be giving you the password okay so you have to note down that password over here so let us wait for some time so if you see it, it gave me this password right so i'll copy this password okay i'll save it somewhere like let's say i'll save it here okay and our user id is okay um, that's that's my uh, google id okay so now what we'll do is we'll close this one and now to access this particular instance right we need to open this our run window then write the command mst sc okay so this will open the remote desktop connection now one thing we um, need to know over here is windows instances are very much secure in nature that means you will not be able to download splunk from by logging into this particular instance okay so that's why what i have done it over here is i actually downloaded the splunk universal forwarder somewhere okay so if i just show you if you just search over here splunk universal forwarder forwarder download okay so it will take you to the splunk download page right universal forwarder download page now over here if you do not have any account so it will ask you to log in and if you do not have any account so you can create a free account over there and log in over there okay if you already logged in before it will automatically log you in now so this is the universal forwarder 7.2.6 and we need to 
take the Windows version of it. Okay, so I have taken the 64-bit version over here, which works for servers as well. Okay, so I already downloaded it and saved it in my local directory. Now, as you remember, I have created another video when I installed the the full-fledged Splunk in Windows uh, instance, right? So over there, what we have done is we went over here. We went to local resources. We clicked on under local devices and resources. We clicked on more. Then I actually saved that package in my D drive software folder. So I'll be exposing my D drive to this particular Windows server. Okay. So I'll be clicking on OK. Then I'll go to my general tab. Okay. I'll copy this external IP of this instance. Okay. I'll come over here. I'll paste this one. Now username we already no just now we set it up right now you'll be asked for credentials that's fine now click on connect okay so let's click on connect over here it will ask you for the password so you have to use the same password we just now set it up right so i'll i'll be copying that password and pasting it over here so i already copied that password so i'll paste it over here i'll click on ok so now it is connecting. It may take certain amount of time based on your network speed. Okay. And it may take certain amount of time to set it up the initial setup as well. Okay. So once it is set it up everything, so it should, you should be able to see the desktop over here. Okay. Now we are able to see it. Let us give it some time uh, so that it, it just it will give you some network related stuff you need to accept it and it will open the server manager as well now for us we need that universal forwarder software right so for that we'll go to this one okay let us close the server manager okay now in file file explorer we'll go to networks here okay and this is the exposed network so this is our d drive we exposed just just now right so over there I have actually kept that universal forwarder software inside my softwares folder okay so let it load now this is our universal forwarder software right so I'll copy that one I'll come to the desktop I'll paste it over here now based on your network connectivity it may take certain amount of time to copy that file from your d drive to this particular instance okay we'll wait for certain amount of time then we'll come back okay so now it is copied we will run this msi file okay so first thing is you need to accept this license agreement over here okay so we will click on instead of clicking on next we will be clicking on customize options now if, over here if you see the default installation path is c program files Splunk universal forwarder right we'll keep as it is so our installation directory will be keeping as it is you can change it as well if you if you needed it over here we'll be clicking on next okay so now over here you can have your SSL certificate installed as well. Okay. So as we are doing demo, so we will not be installing any kind of SSL certificates, but in actual production scenario, ideally you should be using any SSL certificate over here. Okay. So I'll be clicking on next. Now over here, this is important in universal forwarder. You can install either as a local system or as in using a do domain account okay so we'll be using the local as a local user so that the local user have access to all data you can access from this particular instance okay now if you use a domain account that particular user not only have the local system access it can also access some other instances from where it can collect the log okay so that is the difference between a local and the domain account okay so as we are doing the demo so we'll be using the local account itself but if you need to have access other instances as well you can you you can using you can install universal forwarder using a domain account as well okay i'll be clicking on next okay over here this is the trick 
Now, if you see it over here, there are two things, Windows event logs and the performance monitor logs, right? So here, basically, you are selecting what are the logs you are going to collect from this particular instances, okay? So I'll be clicking on this security log, system log, okay? And, and for performance, let's say CPU load and memory. Okay, these two logs I'll be collecting. So based on your requirement, you can click on the corresponding log files. Okay, so this is the log file. This this tick check boxes are actually mapping to the API. So Splunk will be calling those API and getting those log files. Okay, so now now this is for the Active Directory monitoring. So if you have the Active Directory as well set up, so you can do the setup over here. Okay, so as I do not have, I'll just check, take this, this log files. I'll be clicking on next. Okay. So over here, you are going to create the admin user ID and credential. That's the same way we did it for universal forward installation for Linux instances, right? So I'll be giving the user ID as admin. I'll be creating a password. The same password you have to give it over here. Okay, I'll be clicking on next. Okay, so here basically you are setting up if you if you read this one if you intend to use a Splunk deployment server to configure this universal forwarder you have to give the deployment server host IP and the port number. Okay, so as we will not be using de deployment server now deployment server I will be creating a separate video for that. Okay, we will not be giving it anything over here. I will be clicking on next. So here if you are configuring, if you are basically, we are configuring the universal forwarder to send these log files to an Linux instance, right? So I'll be giving the Splunk receiver IP and password. So for that, I'll come back over here. I'll go to our compute engine. So this is our Splunk receiver. Its external IP is 35244.54.3, right? So if I just access this instance, Okay. Now, if I just go to settings, forwarding and receiving, so this is our receiver, right? Configure receiving. So currently I disabled it, but the receiving configurations has been done, right? So it is listening on port 997. So this is our server IP. So I'll be coming up over here. So I cannot paste it over here. So I'll be 35244543 okay the port number is default one triple nine seven right so i'll be giving triple nine seven over here nine 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 seven okay i'll be clicking on next then i'll be clicking on this install it will ask you for user account privileges so i'll be clicking on yes so it currently it is it is getting installed so it, it may take certain amount of time so we'll come back after some time Okay, so now our universal forwarder has been installed over here. And while installing the universal forwarder, we also configured the Splunk receiving portion as well. And also we configured the inputs for the universal forwarder, right? So that means this particular universal forwarder is already collecting the log, right? And sending it to our Splunk receiver. To check it out, you can check out these folders as well. So if I just go to C drive, then program files then Splunk universal forwarder 
okay so then if i just go to etc system local folder so here is our outputs.conf so if i just open with notepad right so this is our output.conf which is basically sending to our our server over here something wrong happened so i think when we configured it as because of the slowness of the network this 997 come came over here as a inside the ip itself so i'll be changing that one i'll just copy this guy to our desktop okay I'll just delete this guy i'll paste the outputs.com just now we copied okay i'll edit this guy first and then i'll keep it so in windows this is the problem because you cannot directly save inside the program files so you have to do something like this save so let us re-verify 54.3 colon triple nine seven right yes so copy it then i will paste it over here so replace the item over here continue okay so now we will restart the universal forwarder so for that what we'll do is we'll go to our command prompt okay run as administrator yes then we will go to cd c program files and splunk universal forwarder folder right i'll copy this path okay so i'll go to bin folder again okay i'll say splunk restart okay so it will be restarting the universal forwarder so let us wait for some time to the restart to complete then we'll go to our receiver and enable it okay okay so our universal forwarder has been restarted now so ideally it should be collecting the logs windows logs and forwarding right so now to check it out whether it is forwarding or not we will enable this receiver right so currently it is listening on port 9997 our 335 to 44.54.3 right so now by default it is sending to the, our main index as well so we will go to our main index and see whether it is sending us some data or not yes it is started sending the data if you see the host if i just see the host this is our windows forwarder host right and if you see the different source this is cpu load available memory windows event log system log right and source type also similar type so this is how you are you are basically forwarding the windows event logs to a Linux instance over here by using a universal forwarder. Now there is another way to access Windows log using WMI. Maybe I'll be creating a separate video for that. But but this is how the, the, the best stuff should work. Okay, And using WMI, we may need to do some other kind of configurations as well. We'll see that one. But this is the, uh, but the Splunk recommended way to collect Windows logs is by using Universal Forwarder itself. Okay, so so in the next video, let us talk about how to use deployment server to manage our forwarders. Okay, see you in next video.